I came across an interview conducted by Dr. Eric Berg with a farmer named John Moody, and what I found stunned me. It wasn't just another story about a small farm struggling against the odds, it was a revelation. A chilling look into a much larger plan that has been quietly unfolding hidden from public view. This isn't just an issue of a few regulations here and there, this is about taking control over our food supply, one farm at a time. As I listened to John Moody, a homesteader from Kentucky, share his experiences, it became clear that something much bigger was happening. We're not just talking about policies for food safety or health. What's being presented as protection for consumers is actually a calculated effort to eliminate small farmers and push us toward a future dominated by synthetic lab-grown food. The crux of the issue starts with a bill requiring electronic identification for livestock. What seems like a simple technological update is actually the key to unlocking full surveillance over our food system. John Moody, who has lived this battle firsthand, explained how the government has been pushing this agenda for years, starting with the National Animal Identification System NAIS. This system would force every farmer, big or small, to tag and track every animal they own. Think about what that means, not just for large-scale operations but for family farms, homesteaders and small farmers raising animals naturally, as they've done for generations. The cost and compliance alone would be enough to bankrupt many of these smaller operations. And once they're gone, who will provide us with real pasture-raised meat? The answer is clear, no one. The system is designed to wipe them out. John explained how the technology, RFID or radio frequency identification, would allow the government to know where every animal is at all times. On the surface, they claim this is for disease control, but the reality is much more troubling. In places like Ireland, where this system has already been implemented, there hasn't been a single significant outbreak of animal disease. And yet, farmers are being forced to comply with increasingly restrictive measures under the guise of public health. But it doesn't stop with disease prevention. There's another motivation here, one that's been quietly gaining traction in the media and among global organizations. The claim that livestock, particularly cattle, are a major contributor to climate change. We've all heard the argument that reducing meat consumption will help save the planet, but what they don't tell you is that this argument is part of a larger agenda. Governments, international organizations like the World Economic Forum and major corporations are all working together to push a plant-based, bug-based, or lab-grown diet. Why? Because synthetic food is far easier to control and much more profitable for large corporations than real, pasture-raised meat. John Moody described how the government's environmental policies are being used as a tool to wipe out livestock farming. In Ireland, for example, over 41,000 livestock were culled, killed, to meet climate targets. The same thing is happening in Michigan and other U.S. states where farmers are being forced to reduce the number of animals they raise under the pretense of environmental protection. But here's the real kicker. The farms that are being wiped out are the small, sustainable farms. The ones using environmentally friendly practices, like rotating cattle on pasture. These are the farms that are actually improving the soil, sequestering carbon, and producing nutrient-rich food. Meanwhile, large industrial farming operations, confined animal feeding operations, are often exempt from these regulations. Why? Because they are part of the corporate system that benefits from controlling food production. The end game is clear. Eliminate small farms and replace real food with synthetic alternatives. The synthetic meat industry has already seen massive investments from billionaire-backed companies and governments eager to present it as a climate solution. But despite all the funding and media hype, the public simply isn't buying it. When disasters hit, the shelves might be empty, but the fake meat section is always untouched. Why? Because people know instinctively that these products aren't real food. They're a poor imitation, lacking the essential nutrients and quality that come from real, pasture-raised meat. Yet the push for synthetic food continues. The more they restrict livestock farming, the fewer options we'll have. And eventually, if small farmers are pushed out, we may not have any real food left. John Moody painted a clear picture of this future. One where lab-grown meat and bug-based protein are presented as the only sustainable choices left. It's a bait and switch. They take away our access to real food and present these alternatives as the only solution. But is that a future any of us want? It's not too late to stop this. John Moody has been on the front lines of this battle for years, and in 2009, small farmers and consumers stood up against the National Animal Identification System and won. They proved that when people come together they can resist government overreach. But the fight is far from over. 
Right now, the USDA is trying to roll out electronic identification for livestock nationwide. They're doing it quietly, under the radar, hoping no one will notice until it's too late. But we have the power to stop it. As John explained, this isn't just about farmers. It's about all of us. If we don't stand up for our right to choose what we eat, soon that choice will be taken away from us. John also highlighted how the government and large corporations have learned from their past failures. They've become more strategic, rolling out policies little by little, under the guise of safety and climate action. But make no mistake, the goal remains the same. Control the food system, wipe out small farms and replace real food with synthetic alternatives. So what can we do about it? First, it's critical that we support our local farmers, buy directly from them whenever possible. The more we support small farms, the harder it will be for the government and corporations to eliminate them. Second, contact your local representatives and let them know you oppose these restrictions. There's a bill in Congress right now, led by Congresswoman Harriet Hegman, aimed at stopping the USDA from forcing RFID tracking on livestock. We need to support efforts like this to keep our food system in the hands of the people, not corporations and bureaucrats. Finally, spread the word. Most people don't realize what's happening behind the scenes, and it's up to us to change that. I've linked the full interview with Dr. Eric Berg and John Moody in the description below. Watch it, share it, and start a conversation about what's at stake. The more people know about these issues, the harder it will be for the government to push them through unnoticed. Now it's time for you to take action. This isn't just about food, this is about our freedom to choose what we put on our dinner tables. If this video shocked you, if it made you think twice about what's really happening with our food, don't just sit back. Join the fight. Use the comment section below to share your thoughts, ask questions, and let's open up a real conversation about these food restrictions. Every voice matters. And remember to share this video with your friends and family. The more people who see this, the more pressure we can put on those in power. We need to wake people up before it's too late. Subscribe to this channel for more updates because this fight isn't going away. The battle for real food is ongoing and the more of us that stand up, the stronger we become. Together, we can protect our food, our health, and our freedom. The future of our food is in our hands. Let's make sure it stays that way.